Yo, what's happening? Welcome to the channel. This is Living in Alberta, and today we're gonna to look at five current things you need to know before moving to Red Deer, Alberta in 2023. Hey, what's up? My name is Kyle. Welcome to the channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. On this channel, we break down everything when it comes to moving to or living in Alberta. So if you do want to see more videos like this one, hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you're notified every single week when a new video comes out. And if you would like any help with real estate needs, I am a licensed realtor here in the province. Use this info popping up. Get a hold of me any way you want. Phone, text, email, doesn't matter. We'd love to hear from you. All right, that being said, let's do it. All right, guys, let's get right into it. Let's take a look at number one. And I get asked a lot about this question lately because of the conditions that we've been having here in Alberta. We do have a lot of wildfires going on, so people are always asking me, what is the smoky conditions really like? Is it really bad or is it just a little bit of haze? So we're gonna get right into it. But first off, let's talk about last spring. Last spring, we had a metric shit ton of rain. I haven't seen that much rain, I don't think in my entire life. It felt like I was living in BC or something. There was so much rain. I had clients out in Sylvan Lake who weren't diligent with their sump pump. A lot of people ended up having water issues. Fast forward to this summer and it has been super hot and super dry. For the last month and a half, we've been above 25 degrees. <laughs> hot in here feels like the surface of the sun we've had no rain and unless you've been sleeping under a rock you probably know that alberta has a ton of wildfires going right now so we actually have the most amount of wildfires that we've ever had in our history in a single year it's been actually so dry out here that i have horses and i've considered giving them hay because our grass just was not growing but with all of these wildfires we do have some really smoky conditions here in Red Deer and throughout the entire province. And it is really thick smoke. So I really noticed it in my chest. I really noticed it in my eyes. It, you know, with the last few days, we have got lucky and we've had a little bit of rain. So for the last three, four days, we've actually had quite a bit of rain, which was much, much needed, not only for the wildfires, but for also for the farmers and for the horses and the animals. So I'm looking outside right now and we have clear blue skies, but the wildfires still are going. I hope that this rain helped a little bit. And depending on how that wind picks up, it could get smoky here again. Now, usually we're getting it from BC, and I was just talking to some clients from BC the other day, and they say wildfire season is just about to start in British Columbia, so I hope we don't get it from both sides. But yes, the conditions here in the central Alberta area and across all of Alberta have been really smoky, and it can be very significant on certain days. So again, if you have health issues, asthma, whatever it is, COPD, this could affect you. And even just if you're out running and doing stuff, these smoky conditions can be super hard on the lungs. All right, let's move along to number two. And I kind of want to touch on the Red Deer Hospital and hospital wait times here within the city. So the Red Deer Hospital is the largest acute care center outside of Edmonton and Calgary. And not only does it serve the population of 100,000 people within the city of Red Deer, but it services the entire central Alberta area, which has about half a million people. So what that means is that this hospital is ridiculously busy. Where are all the doctors? There are no free doctors. Now the doctors and the nurses here, they're world-class, they do a phenomenal job, but the Red Deer City Hospital has needed an expansion for a very long time. We're actually at the 30 year mark where there has been a net zero increase in hospital beds within the hospital. So what does this mean? This means that the Red Deer Emergency Department can have some very, very long wait times. It's not uncommon. I just looked today, they're at four hours. Sometimes you can get lucky and you can sneak in there on a off day and get in there pretty quick. But there's been times in some few times this year, like in January, that, that hospital wait time has been 10, 12, I've even seen 14 hours. I am not going to just stand around and wait for Mr. Chang to die. Find me another doctor! The hospital is understaffed and it needs a huge expansion. And even for things like surgeries, there can be long wait times. However, it seems to be getting better, especially as this COVID stuff kind of blows by. 
but there is a huge expansion set to take place for the Red Deer Hospital, which is amazing news. It's the biggest expansion in Alberta Health Services history. $1.8 billion will be allotted to the Red Deer Hospital. It's going to add just about 200 extra beds, three operating rooms, and one of the most important things, in my opinion, is the addition of a cardiac catheterization lab. The $1.8 billion multi-year expansion and renewal of the Red Deer Regional Hospital Centre will begin with a commitment of $193 million in spending over the next three fiscal years. This is absolutely huge because I think it's absolutely terrible that people who have heart attacks have to wait for an ambulance to take them up to the Royal Alex in Edmonton when we have such a great hospital right here within the city and we need this here in Red Deer. So I'm super, super pumped that they're adding this to the Red Deer Hospital. But the process is slow going, so they don't expect this to be complete until 2030, 2031. So it's gonna be a long time before we get the help that we need here. So hospital wait times, especially when you're going to emerge, can be a very long wait here in Red Deer. I mentioned this before, but a pro tip, if it's something that is super non-urgent and you're able to drive, head out to one of the smaller hospitals like Innisfil or Lacombe and I hope nobody is watching this from those places because they would be pissed if they heard me say that. This is a pro tip from someone who used to work on the ambulance but you get right in in those smaller towns and you see a doctor right away so it might be something to consider being that Red Deer is such a busy place and it has such long wait times. Where the hell is that deadbeat hospital? Find out. All right, let's talk about the nightclub situation here in Red Deer. Now, when I moved here back in 1998, this town was, it was popping. It was off the charts. I'm telling you, buddies from Edmonton, Calgary, all over, they came to Red Deer because they wanted to party here. I think there was six or seven nightclubs at the time. And right now, there is no nightclub. So they just recently closed Billy Bob's and Bellini's, which have been mainstays here within the city. I think those bars have been open for 35, 40 years. But the hotel was bought by the Ochis Nation and they shut them down and they are turning it into a casino in the hotel. No more clubs. What? Yes. Your life is retail. So if you're really into nightlife and nightclubs, Red Deer is really, really subpar in this situation. We do have some good breweries and some really good lounges. And I shouldn't say we have zero nightclubs. When Billy Bob shut down, I think it was some of the staff from there, they ended up opening another older nightclub that used to be here back in the day called the Silver Buckle. They revived it and opened it on the north end. So there is one nightclub for the time being here in Red Deer. Maybe it's a great opportunity for one of you entrepreneurs looking to open something up, but the nightlife in Red Deer definitely sucks ass. Are you serious? This is completely unacceptable. All right, let's move along to the next one. I think we're on number four, but let's talk about the home inventory rates within the city of Red Deer. So right now there is really low inventory within the city. From this time, if you compare from right now to this time last year, we actually have 17% less inventory. So we have 1.74 months. I'm sure you already know this, but what that means is that everything were to sell and nothing new were to come on the market in just under two months, all the homes would be gone and there'd be nothing left for sale. Now we have seen a decrease in sales in Red Deer from this time last year to where we are now, and also a decrease in the amount of new listings that are coming on the market. So when you combine that low inventory with the amount of new listings that are coming on the market with all the demand of people moving here, it is keeping home prices stable. Now, one of the big reasons as to why you're seeing there not as much new listings come on the market as we do every spring and you're seeing the amount of sales go down is because of these rising interest rates. So the interest rates just went up again a couple months or a couple weeks ago, and it sounds like they might go up again in another couple months. So what that does is it causes buyers to pause. And when buyers pause, Sellers, they also, it translate across to them and they pause also because they realize that it's not as, as competitive as market. And a lot of these sellers already have a good interest rate. So they're looking to ride that out and not have to become a buyer again. So the Bank of Canada seems hell bent on getting inflation down to 2%. So I'm not sure how much more we're gonna see these interest rates rise. Again, it causes buyers to hesitate, it pushes some buyers out of the market. It also pushes buyers down into the lower price ranges as well. So you're seeing a lot more activity in the lower price ranges compared to the higher ones. 
but because of this low inventory that we have and all of the demand of the people moving here, home prices are remaining stable, so that is good news. All right, let's talk about the final one, and this is one that most people don't wanna hear about, and it's kinda crappy because municipal tax rates in central Alberta are on the rise, so Red Deer, surrounding area and this spills even into other regions in the province as well but red deer is my area so this is what i'm going to talk about but because of this inflationary environment that we have here in canada you're seeing grocery prices go up you're seeing gas prices go up house prices obviously are going up utility bills some of the utility bills have been crazy we have all of this inflation happening it's going to be more spending for the municipalities we've had for example black falls has had to increase their budget for their police department that's going to translate over into tax increases now, Red Deer, Black Folds, Lacombe, a lot of these different places have all approved increases in taxes for 2023 and 2024. I don't think the residents in Red Deer are going to notice as much in places like Lacombe and Black Folds, where the property taxes are already quite high. For example, Lacombe is ranked in the top five of Alberta cities for having the highest property tax rates already. So something to consider, we are gonna see higher rates here, higher taxes. Now, I really encourage you though to keep it in perspective. A lot of people have moved here from British Columbia, Ontario, where home ownership, if they have children, isn't even gonna be attainable if they were to stay there. And for a lot of them as well, home ownership wasn't attainable, but you're able to move out here to Alberta and you're literally saving hundreds of thousands of dollars on purchasing a home. You're also saving a huge amount on cost of living, on gas prices, you're not paying provincial sales tax. So I get why people are pissed off. There's lots of inflation already. People are feeling heat in so many other areas of their bills and their life. And now the taxes are going to go up. So I get it, it sucks. How are we ever gonna pay all these bills? <laughs> I, I didn't know what to do. But I really encourage you to keep things in perspective, but also keep in mind that taxes are going to be going up here in the central Alberta region. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell so you're notified every single week when a new video comes out. And if you would like any help with the real estate needs, I'm a licensed realtor here in the province. Get a hold of me any way you want, phone, text, email, doesn't matter. All right, guys, I will see you next week. Cheers.